Hey guys, welcome back to the Markout Network. I'm Neil Pretty Boy Thomas here with everyone's favorite, Dean Walker. <laughs> and I'm your boy Cordell, aka Smoke. How you guys doing today? I'm doing good. Doing all, all right, man. You guys feeling all right? You still coming off that WrestleMania hangover, right? A little bit. I was so hungover. Sometimes you need energy drinks, so I do got Are we getting another plug in? Prime. I do have this blue oh, raspberry yeah. prime energy I got, drink. I got wow, sponsorship. Bull. Anybody, anybody want to come our way with some sponsors? <laughs> hey, you, I can't reach my drink right now, got, but you probably guys already know what I'm drinking already. Got stone cold I, over here. So I won't be drinking beers. mine since I left it on the table and went to the bathroom. And if you know the rules, it's you don't leave, you don't come back for a second drink after you left it unattended. You don't trust nobody. <laughs> Is that the rule? That's the rule. <laughs> oh my god! I didn't see. I didn't even know that. I'd be like, I don't care. People pay see. attention, and he would and see. He would be in back of, in the back of someone's van this very moment. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's a fair point. Yep. Damn. All right. All right. Let's get on with the topic. All right. All right, guys. We got a lot to talk about. We're gonna talk about Monday Night Raw. We're gonna talk about SmackDown, WWE. What the difference between a Vince booking is and a Triple H booking because there clearly is a difference there. Wouldn't I, you guys all agree? No, I can't wait for you to tell me what that difference is. I can already can I could see what the difference is okay. based on the numbers. <laughs> I, but okay. I, you know I have a, a hard time with numbers, so uh I want you to explain this. If to you me. want to get analytical, we can. Let's get analytical. Oh, and man, I'm going to get I'm going to drop some knowledge on your you, fucking head, we bro. We can get analytical and all I'm right. just going to get realistic. All right. Let's yeah. let's mm. move on here. You yeah. know what? I want to talk about somebody that I've been dying and eager to fucking talk about all fucking day, right? Uh -huh. Let me tell you this. Smoke, are you waking up at 4.30 in the morning to watch anybody wrestle? No, but I definitely woke up to 5.30 a.m. to text from you watching somebody wrestle. Okay, Dean, are you waking up at 4.30 a.m. for anybody? Not even for myself. Not even for yourself. Nope. Well, I woke up at 4.30 in the morning to watch Mercedes Monet defend her IWGP Women's Championship at Sakura Genesis okay. against Azume and Hazuki in a triple threat match. That lived up to the hype. I know I was looking forward to this match. Azume, the Lightspeed champion, Hazuki, is really good. 25 years old in her own right. And let me just hold this up, guys. Because I got to say, I'm going oh, to get dramatic here. Let me take the headset off here for a second. Whoa, oh. whoa. What are we doing here? Yeah. So anybody can see this. He's getting up right now. Mm. He's, showing, he's showing the camera. Did you there spill you your beer again? No. <laughs> there it is. Right there. He's showing the camera right now for the ones who can't see the Mercedes Monet. I, I definitely envy you. T-shirt. All um, who don't see. Wow, he is a number one fan. Okay. Jesus Christ. All right. She definitely made the Monet from that. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> she, God. she'd be hitting that bank statement, the tax return, mm. <laughs> the W two. I hope she yeah. hits a lawsuit with how crazy this. That's looks. what she should do. The W two is her signature move, which leads into the finisher, the tax return. You so I got to say this too. I mean, there's a lot of people. Maybe he likes it. He likes it. Yeah, sure. There's a lot of people he's, that he's jumping for joy. Yeah. No, <laughs> yes, yeah, he's very excited. <laughs> so there's a lot of people that wish Mercedes Monet ill will in leaving WWE for whatever reason. If you got a beef with her mm. because the way she left her and Naomi, mm. so be it. But to say that you want her to fail in any regard is fucking ridiculous and it pissed me the fuck off because not only did she prove she could be successful anywhere, she can wrestle up against any females on planet Earth and put on a great fucking match. And that's undisputable. This is why she's the best in the world. This is why she's the best all time. And she's going to prove that fact over and over again until everybody wakes the fuck up and realizes that she is the greatest of all time. Undisputed. No doubt about it. And she's going to prove it again on the 23rd. And she's going to continue to prove in that all summer long. Even if she goes back to WWE, she's going to prove it again to all the haters and all the fucking marks that wish her that Ooh. she's going to fail and be unsuccessful and all that shit, man. She's going to prove it again and again and again until whenever she decides to hang it up and go on to fucking Hollywood. And mm. guess what? She's going to be successful over there, too. It's her world, and we're just living in it. Damn. Do you feel that right now? Did she hire you as her manager? It, no. He's he's the Paul Heyman. I mean, what no. the fuck? Of this, of this, <laughs> you're... <laughs> <laughs> you are the you I mean, are the, no. the, the what is he called? Are you fucking on the low? No, I mean, no, no, I mean, no, 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 no. I'm just saying that she is the best. Okay. And it's undisputed. We mm. believe you. Neil, All right, cool. Neil Thomas, the wise man yes. from Mercedes Monet. Listen, I didn't I never got up at 4 30 in the morning. So I'm not getting up for Roman. Ooh. I'm not getting up for Cody. Mm -hmm. I might have gotten up at 4 30 
in the morning for Stone Cold Steve Austin in 1998, maybe. Mm, probably not. Understandable. I was understandable. 14. I'm probably not even. Maybe okay. shit. I was probably still up. Yeah. I don't know. I, I'd say so. But congratulations. But all honesty, congratulations to Mercedes for successfully defending her title. It was a great match. Oh, that Pla- was cute. Look at that. We clapped at the same time. All, all the up. female. It was a 15-minute match. Masterpiece. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to see her back in the ring on April 23rd, and she's going to put out another banger, and I can't wait to see that. Whatever time that is, I'm going to be up and watching that fucking match because I know she's going to deliver. And this is what I'm hoping for. I'm going to be quick here, Smoke. I'm going to wrap this up. Forbidden Door. There's a lot of opportunities here. I'm putting this out there right now. A lot of people want to see Mercedes versus Jamie Hayter. Okay. That's the match I want to see. That's going to be a great match. If we can get that match, hey, they might even put it off until All In in... What is it? Uh, late August, August twenty seventh. You know Wembley Stadium. That match, they got ninety thousand seats to fill, and we can talk about that too. Whether they're going to get to that number, but congratulations, Mercedes Monet. I don't see why that couldn't happen because I mean, she doesn't have to necessarily be signed to a contract or to a certain company for that to happen. You can do a no. one. You could do a one night only. Um, She's on a per appearance basis, I believe. Yeah, in New God, Japan. God rest her soul. China was had done quite yeah. a few, quite a few one night onlys before yep. she officially retired in Japan to become a teacher. So I don't see it being a problem. Tony Khan, get mm-hmm. ready to write the biggest check for anybody you've ever written before because she is worth every fucking penny. If you plan to sell out 90,000 seats, she's definitely going to be worth it. All right, guys, that was Your, the highlight. That I wanted to get that off my chest because I feel I needed to, right? Yeah. I feel better now. But you know what I don't feel good about? Oh, what? tell us. Monday Night Raw. Oh, mm. understandable. Man. Monday Night Raw was the worst rated, according to Cage Match. Dot net the worst Monday Night Raw in 30 years, mm-hmm. according to this website. Mm-hmm. And I feel like we're beating a dead horse here because all during the course of the week, people were talking about how shitty Monday Night Raw was yep. and how Vince booked the entire show. And this is going to be the underlying factor. Every fucking podcast, every wrestling podcast, doesn't matter who you are, from the big names to the middle names to the small names to wrestling journalists, all can agree, Vince McMahon being back, handling talent, is a huge fucking mistake. And listen to me, it is a huge fucking mistake, and he should not be booking any matches ever again. Never. Damn. Never. Damn. Not Brock Lesnar, not Cody Rhodes, not Roman fucking Reigns, not Sami Zayn, not the Usos, not any of the bloodline. He put Matt fucking Riddle against The Miz. What fucking for? Why is he going to book that match? Why did he have Austin Theory against Mysterio? What, what the point was that? Mysterio was coming off a high against Dominic. Why is he going to book him against Mysterio, who he just beat, and nobody cares about? Because Austin Theory is a Vince McMahon guy, and we're going to get more of these random bullshit. And I'm going to go through the matches, but I want to touch base with you guys first. Monday Night Raw, quick thoughts. What do you guys think? All right. Are you done? Go ahead. Yeah. Floor's yours, buddy. <laughs> um, I I find it comical that you you all think that now don't that, I mind you, I do agree. Vince McMahon is out of touch. Mm-hmm. He definitely needs to hand over the hand over the reins to someone else. No pun intended. And um, I just find it odd that a guy that you all think that a guy who has ran this company for so long and has created this fan base, this world phenomenon fan base that you all love so he's, much, he's that we on. all love so much, why you guys think he's not equipped to do his job any longer when what's that he number on made the, you all a fan? What's the number on that screen? Read it out loud for everybody to hear. 0.64. Not a lot of carrots, man. And what is that out of? That's out of 10. Mm. That is a small amount of carrots. Not even a bushel. You see that red bar down there, Smoke? Yes. That's According to cagematch.net, out of 347 votes, 255 comments, literally everybody gave it either a 0, a 1, or a 2. Mm. That's Can- the worst rating in the history of Raw. Okay. Can you do me a favor? Yes. Is there a way you can Google... How many people were in attendance for that Raw? It can max out at 19,000. 
And it looked like a pretty steady crowd. It, they, were saying it? It, they were saying it was a sellout. So we'll say so it was between 18,000 and 19,000. I think they even said maybe 17,000, but we're going to say roughly between 17,000 and 19,000. Okay. So it was a and, sellout, and, though, for and, sure. And so uh, on an average Raw over the years. Yes. What's your do point? They Get to usually, it, man. you have to let me make it. <laughs> yeah. On an average Raw. Do they usually sell out the entire building? On an average raw? Mm -hmm. They used to. They used to, but it's on the um, upswing. But usually it's a packed house. Before Triple H went During into, Raw Attitude Era, sell out every I'm night. I'm not talking about that. But I'm talking that, about when you turn on the TV screens. No. Not, is it a packed house? You're telling me. You're telling me that when you turn on Monday Night Raw, you see empty seats? It's on the upswing now. You're telling me, let me, let me that finish, when man. you see Raw, you see empty <laughs> seats? <laughs> I have a point I'm trying to make. You're just trying to argue with me. I'm trying to ask you a question. On Monday Night Raw, you're telling me from the TV screens, you see empty seats? No. And this has been going on for how long? Probably in the last year because of the Bloodline storyline. No. This has been going on since how long? Recently. You're telling me. It was not always a sellout, man. That's a fact. You're telling me. That's all, That's a fact. That over the course of the last several decades, you have seen empty seats. It fluctuates. It raw. fluctuates, it man. It fluctuates what? They You're telling me. Yes, that's what I'm telling you. It you, fluctuates. You've seen the TV screen and you've seen empty spots? Yes. You've seen empty because seats. Because they never they never used to say it raw is a sellout, not in the prime heyday days. They used to say it was a sellout all the time. We are sold out for Monday Night Raw. They went a long fucking Great. time without selling but out. But you tell me with all those people in what the crowd. What are you trying to get at? You're, Explain are to you me. Tell, what, you what are you saying? What are you not saying? Answering my question i did i said it fluctuate yes it was you sold have out not on monday you've so when what you are look you saying when you look at the tv screen you I see just empty said, seats. no i don't see empty seats and guess what next monday night raw you won't see any empty seats either because everybody is going to be that's in attendance the, that's going to change they brother. are going that to be in change. attendance oh, and they're going no, to no, sit no, no, their no. asses right in their seat i was right and they before. are going to continue to be fans of this <laughs> Very okay. controversial. You keep saying that, Entertainment man. You keep company saying that, shit. that can have you over the way, course of the years. You got way too much faith in this shit. I don't man. have faith in anything. I'm being factual about what's going so on. So am I. What, I'm what, being did, I, what factual. did I say that was wrong? What did I say? I that didn't say true? anything was wrong, but I'm just, what I'm saying is I'm saying where the tide is shifting. Regardless, I'm saying uh, where the tide where's is the tide shifting? It's going down, man, because Vince is going to drag this motherfucking company to the ground. He brought him. it up. Yes, he I brought did. he he. You're missing it. He brought it up. He Vince McMahon Who brought what up. Vince McMahon is the reason that <laughs> WWE is the way it is now, and he's the reason why it's gonna go down. Is he? Yes. Okay. Hundred fucking A percent. Man who knows what he's doing? This is he kinda, doesn't you, know what you he's know doing. What's funny? You know what's funny? He this, doesn't. You know what's funny? That proves the pudding. You man. know what's funny? <laughs> That's proof in the pudding. This is like when the star worst raw this, ever. This is the like worst raw ever this is that like he what, what TV shows have the worst ratings ever. <laughs> the worst raw when they get of to all season time. when TV shows get to rating to season six, seven, eight, their ratings You're drop. It fluctuates. They have the same writer. They have the same creator. I think you're missing Same the big actors. picture. I'm not missing anything. You're I missing think, the big I picture. I think the big picture We're going to be here for six months from now, yep. and you're going to be like, God damn, Vince fucking ruined it. He ruined it completely. I, I, and I, you know those tickets that I are think, selling out right now? I think it's, it's going to go down and down I, and down. I think it's People been... People are going to turn I, off, I man. think it's been ruined for years, but my thing is And this, this is not only the problem. Vince McMahon... He's going to get Triple H either to quit or be fired by the end of the year. I guarantee it. I guarantee fucking tee it. Okay. Triple H will not be here December 31st, 2023. Why? Because you can't have this unbalance. You can't have Vince booking a Raw and now that, Triple H now booking that, SmackDown. Now that I, now that that I can see. Now that I can see. But the fans, y'all not going nowhere. 
you and good not, to go. But you're talking about the fans. What about the wrestlers? The wrestlers who are more important. What about their perspective? What about morale in the back? Morale was great when Vince was gone. Vince comes back. Morale is in the motherfucking garbage with him. What about wrestlers? What morale, about morale, and wrestlers. Yeah, exactly. That matters, please man. Please tell me. Please tell me. All them twenty ump people that have Triple H brought back. What the fuck have they done? That is a really good point. That is a really good point. Please tell me what groundbreaking moments have any of these people. Dean, do you would you like to chime in? Please tell me what have they done. I want to know. Because the morale is in question. What did they do? I know what you're going at. I'm I'm I'm, I'm just telling you what I'm seeing. No, I'm telling you what I'm seeing what, too. What did they do? I never say Triple H was perfect. I never. Not, I, you guys I keep never saying. Say, you guys keep saying his name. I'm. I'm just saying. I'm not saying Triple H. One man don't run no show. One man. Tell do, Vince that. One man Tell don't Vince run that. no show. Tell Vince that. One man. Every, hey Vince every, McMahon. Everybody one man don't run no e show. Everybody loosen the. Everybody listen. Loosen the bolts on that wheel. Yeah. One man don't run no show. But who has the final say? It don't matter. It, it matters. It Big don't time matter. It matters. It don't matter. I just want to know, and I really want you guys to check me on this. I'm all about people checking me. I love for people to prove me wrong. I really do. Oh, you're going to be fucking wrong, unbelievably wrong, six months from now. Oh, so is Emma champion? Emma's not champion, no. Hmm. All the people that Triple H brought is back. Gargan right? or is Gargano champion? Gargano's not champion, no. Hmm. The best thing Triple H has done in his reign. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Right? Is Hit Row champion? Hit Row is not champion. Oh. You know who's a Triple H guy? What about Gunther? What about him? Look at his resume. Yeah. Did he not? Killing it. All right. United States title. I, I have my opinion on theory, but he made the titles relevant, right? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I were even gave not, you credit about that. Were the, the storylines and the matches that Triple H was booking, granted who he put over and who he is, more cohesive and better storytelling? Um, there's when it no, comes to the bloodline? That, that That's just the bloodline. But that's been good even before he Vince left. This is why I think Vince... During last summer, we we're okay. like, ah, man, a breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. Triple H hiring all these people back. And this is when Vince McMahon's gone, right? Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, latter half of the year, December, January comes back, the Royal Rumble. And you feel like, man, it's not the same. What's going on here? Wait, wait, these storylines. Wait, wait, wait. The week after Triple H brought these people back, you telling me he came back? This was... uh. Are you telling me he came back? Because next week, I, I promise you, after these people re-debuted... He was next gone week for they a while. fell flat. He was gone by for the a next while. week they fell flat. Yeah, and I just beg, I beg, I beg anybody to tell me anything different, man. This ain't no conspiracy theory. I'm not trying to get conspiracy theory, this man. Ain't no conspiracy. I'm telling hey, you, I, have you not I, why seen would the you, shift and change? Why would you all be shocked that he wasn't gone? It's his company. Yeah, but they, it's his company. But my point is. WWE lied to our face because they said he was only around for the sale of the company. They're he business owners. He won't be back. They're, in they're business H, owners. Triple H, Bruce Pritchard, uh, the all other, business owners lie. All the con, uh, the con guy. I can't think of his name off the top of my head. Yeah. Nick Khan. They went on television. They told the wrestlers on Raw and SmackDown, Vince is only here. For a sale, he will not be back in creative. All of a sudden... So oh, they told the people what they wanted to hear. They lied to the wrestlers. They mm. lied to the public. Mm. They lied to everybody. Mm. So why do you believe... That sounds like business. Business? That sounds like... That is... That sounds like what half a business wow, is. Wow, man. I, you, we don't like it. I don't agree with it. Yeah. But it's, it's business. But see, what you're saying is, in your defense is, things ain't that much different between Vince and Triple H, where it's clearly a difference... There is a huge but difference. But you haven't told me. I just told you. You didn't. I just told you the number. And let me pull you up. You told me a number of a Monday Night Raw that just passed. That was the worst in history. Yes. That in just passed. That Vince booked 100%. And? What don't you understand about that? That's going to continue and ticket sales are going to go down. Can I Why ask don't you, you something? understand that? What has been different from that Raw, from any of the Raw, the Raw? Because the past Vince few McMahon months? is getting worse and he's out of touch what we want as viewers.
I agree with both of you. Mm -hmm. All right. I agree with both of you. I think Neil's right. Vince McMahon is out of touch. And when he came back, I agree with drastically, that too. things went down the drain. So, yeah. Um, but I agree with you. There is a this lot is of why things. You didn't let him finish talking. You didn't let him finish talking. I said I agree You did not let him finish talking. This is You did not let him finish talking. This is why Mercedes you did will never not not come, let him back. Oh, never come back. She'll never come back. The fight, you know what? I ain't even going to get into that because I would hate to really – because I'm a fan. I'm a fan. You better be careful, Smoke. I'm you a fan. Better be I love be the careful. girl. We're going to be having a do. But if we really wanted to go down there, we could go down there. Go ahead. All right. Sorry. We cut you off there, Dean. We ain't going to no, go no, there. Um, <laughs> We're not going to go there. We're not going to go there. Sorry. I know we're yelling, but – here, Go how ahead, about Dean. this? Don't apologize. How about Quiet. this? Ready? Here, give, give me one, give me one quick second. If you're watching this on camera, watch. Ready? All right, now their, now their mics are cut. So right now, I'm telling you guys how it is. Stop bouncing. Stop. <laughs> he cut us off. Yeah, they're in the background now. It's, it's my show now. I'm, I'm taking over. Um, so let me, let me get, let me get to my point here. Let me get to my point. Let me get to my point. <laughs> I'm just gonna drag this on. I'm 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 in the I'm in the seat, man. This is I'm I'm driving this boat. But all right, yeah, you don't want to Titanic this shit. So I agree with both of you. All right, Neil, you're on the fucking mo money, man. You're you're on the Monet. You're on the Monet when it comes to your opinion. That was that was a good one. They're laughing. You just can't hear them. Um, and I think. Since Vince McMahon is, has come back, things have gone down the shitter, uh, creative wise, uh, business wise, and then you also have the morale that you brought up. Great point. The morale that's number one. Business matters. All that matters. But if the morale is low, you're not going to have any employees, and then the business is not going to be there anyway. So you have to have the morale first, man. So he made a fantastic point. But it's also, you know, Cordell over here. He made a he made a great point in, in to counteract Triple H. He dropped the ball on a ton of fucking things. But also, nobody's perfect. So the only thing that we can hope for is a better product, and that is exactly what we got with Triple H. We got a better product. No, not yet, not yet. <laughs> we got a better product, <laughs> and uh, I think with that better product. Then we have to be happy with what we got. Dean, that was very fantastic. Thanks for cutting my mic off. I appreciate it. I'll remember that for next time. <laughs> what do you mean? I, that wasn't me. That was our <laughs> producer, T. No, no. No, you made exactly – you stayed on the fence. You you rolled that fence. You were walking out. You are tight roping. You were Undertaker walking that tight rope. You tight rope. You Damn straddled right. it. Yeah, you Damn straddling right. it. So, in fairness to Smoke here, Smoke, I know what you're saying. You're saying that what better product am I watching other than – Triple H whiffing on a few guys that he brought up, mm -hmm. right? That's mm -hmm. exactly what you're saying, and mm -hmm. I completely understand that. I'm not a complete Triple H fan. He doesn't know how to book a women's division, but overall, I think he's done a good, good job. Great job, no, because great job would be booking the females better. He would make the tag team titles for the females better. Gunther, fantastic. United States title. Because you know, you know, despite you know, what he you know did your with girl, theory, you know your girl I like walking, it. You know your girl walking out was under the Triple H reign. <laughs> she walked out because it was Vince McMahon's doing. You, you know, you know your girl walked out under the Triple H reign. Did she? No. She walked out. It was May. Triple H didn't have the reins by yeah, then. Yeah, Vince was still there. But he yeah. was, but the accusations were already starting. Yeah, man. It was Vince's booking that got her out, man. Oh. Contrary to that, so we're just going to skip ahead here, guys. We're going to go to SmackDown because there's nothing worth talking about Monday Night Raw. The Friday Night SmackDown, according to cagematch.net, was a rating of 6.69. Okay. Which was actually, that's almost a 7. That's almost pretty decent. It's okay. a decent amount of carrots, right? That's there. a decent amount of carrots. Okay. And then you had a six man tag with the Brawling Brutes. Defeating Imperium in 11 minutes and 43 seconds. Ricochet defeating Ivar in four minutes. Liv Morgan and Raquel defeats Natalia and Shotzi in two minutes and 51 seconds. <laughs> wow, right? Tag team match. The Judgment Day versus LWO in the 10-minute match. Singles match. Jey Uso defeats Sami Zayn nine minutes and 49 seconds. 
And then we had two dark matches that they don't give us a time. So obviously when it comes to storyline wise, SmackDown actually made sense mm -hmm. because it was a Triple H booking and we were nearly getting a Vince booking, but he was at a fucking Eagles concert that day and he was out some old fucking dinosaur band who's eagles i didn't even think were around i think they're all dead by now yeah. anybody know the eagles still alive nah. is it original members wow it's something that's like crazy. my mom would listen to like 1972 god rest hey, his soul hey hey i like i like uh Does anybody know they're still around was it hotel california and, and or some if shit? you're an eagles fan your i dad don't in his in his 70s my dad is in his 70s no say, isn't dad. your dad in his 70s no, he's like 80 oh thanks. and i apologize if got, I'm, i got an older dad <laughs> yeah and i apologize if i'm fending uh eagles fans but wait i don't give a shit all right whatever i don't think they're listening to I, this I, I, i'll I, tell you that i, 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 pro think, I probably don't yeah i probably don't think so right? i don't think yeah <laughs> they, they'd be like if you're listening to this your grandma <laughs> or grandpa did no, listen be, to you the eagles right they'd have to I, turn up their hearing yeah. aids to listen to us <laughs> yeah. what do they say i don't i don't think they uh his name is mark who are these people? I don't yeah, understand. I, I, yeah. I, I don't think they're checking for us. I don't even think they know that we're going to be checking for us. No, 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 no. No, it's all, it's all good. That is a hell of a fan base to offend, though. That's it, funny. It, it is. So that overall is picture, we're not going to mm -hmm. get in the nuances here with SmackDown because mm -hmm. we're talking about the – because what Vince is and what Triple H is clearly different. They two they have two different visions of what they want to be WWE. The vision's a little blurry. This it, could be this could be Raw and SmackDown like back in the day. Vince booking Raw wow. and Paul Heyman booking SmackDown. It could be kind of like that again. Yeesh. Where remember SmackDown had Kurt Angle, uh Rey Mysterio, yeah. Big Show, mm -hmm. uh, Chris Benoit, fucking dude, Batista. all these people. Batista, hell yeah. JBL. And then you'd have uh Raw being Triple H, Shawn Michaels, you know, all that kind of stuff. What hey, big people, Randy Orton, Ric Flair, the you know, basically yeah. evolution of but we could be seeing big names on Raw doing promos and then also kind of big names fucking having the matches of our of our week, the top matches of the week on SmackDown where, where Paul was booking it. Do you guys think we're going to go into that kind of era again? No, we're not. No. No, because Vince, Monday Night Raw is not going to be good enough for him. He's going to be like, you know what? I'm going to tank Monday Night Raw because nobody else can do it like me. Triple H. Your services are no longer required. I'm taking over SmackDown. Wow, and you think Triple H is going down, huh? I 100 percent do. Okay. It's do you think not he's going to be last. fired first, or do you think he's going to quit first? I don't see Triple H quitting, but do you see? And I, I don't see but him being I, fired either. But do you see him being demoted see, like he was before? Maybe demotion. I didn't see see Stephanie leaving. Just, I know, just yeah. leaving and walking out and never coming back ever again. It seems, but like. you you do have to realize. I mean, tri I'm not you, just in, in general. Triple H. Still has hopefully many years ahead of him. Vince really doesn't, so I don't see him we have quitting. At least two either. years left because Vince McMahon signed that employee agreement. We have two years of this shit. You think Triple H, if this trend continues, because there's no reason why it won't last two years under this regime? Granted, the merging of the company with UFC and Endeavor being come one company that's actually beneficial for WWE. That has nothing to do with this. We're talking about specifically. Specifically, Vince McMahon being in creative. That's the key part. Well, because if Vince McMahon was around and stayed away and let Triple H do his thing, I'm good with that. I'm cool. But Vince McMahon had to go back in there. He says, I'm not going to be in the weeds. I'm only going to manage Cody, Roman, and Brock Lesnar and the higher-ups. That's the huge issue. Now, we were, mm. well, we can talk about, we can debate this too, with Cody winning or losing at WrestleMania, good or bad thing. Now it's a bad thing because he's booking Cody now. Oh, my God. I feel bad for Cody Rhodes even more so now yeah. than I did before. And then he posted on Instagram, oh, I'm going to talk about my WWE future. Please, you fucking marks. He is not quitting the company. He's not He's not a problem with his back or his neck or any injury. He's going to stay with the company. This is all storyline based with Brock Lesnar. He's not leaving. He is not leaving. He signed a multi-year agreement. He's not going anywhere. But you have Vince McMahon, Vince McMahon literally writing Cody Rhodes what he's going to do. And that is a bad thing it is not going to be good it is not how else do we have to explain it to you it's going to be in the shitter the garbage it's not going to work um the ufc thing the only reason i think it might be a bad idea is only because because of that deal i think that's why vince is now kind of in the head spot that he he oh was that's 100 percent he because apparently because uh, it's he, not like he, a speculation either. They did say it. Yeah. No. Yeah. He he weaselled his way and he had this game 
plan from day one, man. Everybody's playing checkers. He was playing chess. He had this plan mm -hmm. from day one to get comfy with a guy he knows for the last 20 years and be in the spot that he's actually in. He knew this was going to happen. And this guy, Mr. McMahon, has allegations against him. Literally, like, he's facing charges against him. And the fact that he's in this spot is fucking ridiculous. Motherfucker should be in jail by now. Like, sexual allegations and all, all this stuff. There's no reason, logically, he should be in this spot. There's none whatsoever. He can't book a show. He was there for a sale that he didn't need to be there. Nick Khan could have did that. There's probably 10 other people could have filled that role. There's no, and I feel like I'm a broken record repeating what everybody else is saying, but yes. that's what I truly believe, and that's the God's honest truth. Yeah, yeah. No, and, and we we all predicted this back when he first left. We said he's going to toy around with the whole selling thing, and then he's going to weasel his way back in. And Yeah, yep. A lot of people will stick around because they're loyal. A lot of people are going to dip. I think the... And, and back to the whole sold out shit, I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys do your thing. But I was going to also say, um, I mean, no, there was like nobody there in 2020. Um, and did you have anything else for us, Neil? <laughs> um, yes, I do. So with that being said, we have Monday Night Raw and SmackDown, clearly two That's different shows. That's a good shows. point. What do you, uh, that yeah, was a good that, point. That, nobody yeah. was there in 2020, yeah. 2021. Yeah, we get it. We get the reference. Nobody there. Did no. you guys get the joke? Okay, I'm okay, sure you okay, did. okay. You okay. guys got the joke, right? Realistically, right. hold on. I had a point. But there was a lot of things like on Twitter and shit to where there was low attendance and they would shift everybody into like a big collective and focus the camera work on that. I mean, so they, I mean, there a was of, a lot of live shows do. That, I feel like though. a lot oh, of yeah, promotions yeah, yeah, yeah. would do that. No, a lot of people, but, but also it's that shows that they went from a sold out crowd to hey guys, let's all squeeze in together well, because well, uh, we you also, know. well we also well we could play a number of factors that played a part in that. First of all, nothing will ever compare to the '90s and early 2000s. We're just in a different time period. We're in a different. It's a different type of show. We went from uh, mostly man or couple show to now it's a family kid show yeah it, it true but we did be, see sold out shows never with triple be h. that we when so when when he when triple h took over everybody was so excited i remember seeing sold out crowds again but that means what i'm trying to say is is that it's possible and people want to be there people want to enjoy it and people want to sell out the arenas again like they used to anybody can have booked i think vince mcmahon we're gonna we're still talking about this and i, I want to get off it because i want to talk about the draft but um i think vince mcmahon wrote that show on a napkin in the hotel bar before it <laughs> happened and he's like what do you guys got planned no here's the napkin we're gonna go with omas and elias to kick off the show and that's what happened all right but anyways he loves omas triple h gets by the way triple h He's he's a puppet now. He's just a puppet. I'm just saying. Um, he Damn. got paraded out there on uh, Monday Night Raw. I mean, I'm sorry, on SmackDown and said the exact same thing he basically was saying on mm. Monday Night Raw. And he said he mentioned the draft and it was a game changer. It's going to change the game forever is basically what he said. And I know a lot of people are chiming in. What does that actually mean for the draft? And my first reaction was like, man, the draft's going to be good because you're going to get fresh matchups. Yep. You're going to get guys switching over. They might put Theory on SmackDown. Gunther goes to Monday Night Raw. But I'm thinking, oh, shit, who's ever on Monday Night Raw, <laughs> God bless their heart and soul. Because if yeah. Vince McMahon is booking this, if Ricochet mm -hmm. goes to Raw, guess what, Ricochet? You're losing to Omos in a minute 30. What's a positive from this draft is that – we will definitely get new faces on SmackDown. SmackDown guys are going to go to Raw. And I'm praying to God that something good happens. And I'm trying to wrap my head around it. And I really don't know other than the fact that it's the hope against hope. I'm like, I'm hoping for something good. But I'm trying to wrap my brain around it. And I can't think of anything that's going to happen good from this draft. I can't because Vince McMahon has one half of Raw, Triple H is booking SmackDown, and that can change like that, a snap of the fingers. So what good is this if Vince McMahon is like, nope, I got to have this guy, I have to have this guy, I have to have this guy, and guess what? Their career is going to be in the fucking toilet after that. And just going to get fed to Brock Lesnar over and over again, or Omos, because apparently he has a hard-on for Omos. 
Nobody cares. Om, was it? What's the thing? Om, Omo sapiens? Is that the thing that was trending? They call it the fans of Omos Omo sapiens. What the fuck, man? Are you kidding me? It's gonna be terrible. And I was looking forward to the draft. We did a show back in October, right, guys, mm -hmm. about the draft. This was with like Triple H was clearly in charge. I was like, hey, we were enthusiastic about it. We were, we were selecting everybody, man. What about the call ups now for this draft? Bro is Vince does he does Vince McMahon even know the NXT guys down there? He had I'm probably sure knows, he knows I'm sure he knows Breaker. He probably knows Breaker. He that's probably the only guy he'll probably select. And mm. where's Breaker's career gonna go? Granted, Breaker was fucking boring in NXT for a he's whole gonna, year. He's gonna be in Reigns spot. He 2015 Reigns. Breaker turned heel is actually semi interesting now. If Vince Vince McMahon gets a hold of him, God only God only hopes, man. Is it's just I don't see any Good coming from this draft, and it's going to happen. I think they're drop. I saw something online. It was May eighth. Mm -hmm. I think that was the day. I I don't know if that was confirmed by WWE, but that's the date that's been thrown out there. Whether it is or isn't, the draft's going to happen regardless. Whether it's the eighth, the fifteenth, or uh, later on, it doesn't really necessarily matter. It's going to happen regardless. Right. Um. So how are they going to select? Is Roman going to stay on SmackDown? Most likely, you know, the Judgment Day. They might get split up, but this draft. I don't have high hopes for it. What do you think about what do you think about the state of the draft now that you know Vince Smoke is booking Raw and Triple H right now is booking SmackDown? Drafts have been shit for the last few decades. Yeah. First of all, half these people hop in and out whenever they feel like it anyway. There is no draft. Hmm. Yeah. There is no draft. It doesn't last. These long. people show up on SmackDown whenever the hell they want to. These people show up on Raw whenever the hell they want to. I have not seen an official draft in years. Not like the old days where no. it was like you stayed on one show literally say, and you stayed on the other one I would say probably show. 2016 is when it, or 17 is when they tried to make an attempt at 16. a, a 16 yeah. is when they tried to make an attempt at a somewhat mm -hmm. sustainable draft. Because and, you and and they have not they have not done that um at all because you would watch a specific show for a specific guy like i want to watch smackdown because eddie guerrero and batista and all those guys are there and then you want to watch raw because evolution never went to smackdown you watch specifically before your guy it, it, they tried separating the pay-per-views they it, it that it was did terrible not, it was it, bad it, it did was not bad. work and, that, and at that time bomb. smackdown they would bomb they were terrible yeah the smackdown pay-per-views no, they're terrible. terrible they're bad um and raw it, was heavier than it, it raw was heavier yeah. and so they have not had an actual draft to me in years. I'm not looking forward to anything special with this draft unless they make NXT a third brand show, meaning that everyone, anyone can go Anybody's to that. Anybody's available. Like, yeah. if, unless that's it. Even then, I'm, I have my reservations about that one, too. Oh, you're saying people get drafted to NXT? Yeah. You mean you get demoted? Uh, you can't look at that as a demotion anymore. <laughs> I, I'm going to be honest with you because, honestly, NXT has been more impressive than a lot of what... Shawn main, Michaels... It, Hit and miss, but I think overall, it's been recently more, he's been it's doing been better. more entertaining. Yeah. It's been more entertaining. We, we disregard NXT 2.0. That never existed. Even no. there, let's be honest. Even didn't there, watch a single episode of that. I, I, don't I think. did. I did not either. But the moments I did see were a little bit more entertaining than sometimes what Raw was putting on. Yeah, and so, so I just think, to me personally, I'm not getting my high my hopes up high for anything special so let when me, nothing has been special the last few months so let me tell you this smoke years. you won't see a complete brand split because you got champions now you got the tag team titles the undisputed tag team titles that are going to jump from show to show okay. so you're going to have wrestlers they will migrate over back and forth same with the women's tag team so it's not going to be a hundred percent split but i think if you do go a hundred percent or eighty percent i think it it could work, but my reservation is the Vince McMahon booking on Raw that's totally fucking this whole thing oh up. Oh, my gosh. I have a prediction, kind of, sort of, and this runs into the question we've been asking ourselves for a, a quite quite a while. And what is that? How are they going to split the undisputed tag team and the world title with the draft? Maybe they're going to tie it into the draft and say, hey, board members of... NBC, whatever the fuck are they, what are, what are they on for SmackDown? It doesn't Fox. matter. Fox and yeah. USA Network, they want to split the titles. Our hands are tied. We got to do it. I they, think you guys have and to factor that. that in, would oh, be sorry. perfect. I think you guys have to factor that into um, consideration as well. I think you guys underestimate the power of a network. 
because I no matter necessarily don't because do, no matter do. because no matter what Vince McMahon wants, he cannot have these platforms without these networks. Obviously. These networks, head chiefs, head honchos, whatever, they know what their audience wants and what they want to see and what mm. will bring them money. If they're if they don't want Vince McMahon to call a certain shot, I guarantee you he will not. Yeah, that's why they're PG. Fox is not going to let that man, that company, cost them money. But these networks, I think you got, there's Vince McMahon, board of directors, people who are in charge. But then you also have these networks involved. Mm-hmm. If there's something crazy going on, especially Fox, you can tell whoever is over at Fox, whatever they're deciding over there too, because they have a say so as well. They're making sure shit ain't going left too much. Yeah. Fox is a Fox has been a come and go deal with them over the yeah. years. They, whoever's running that, they don't want that to go up. Fox, and Fox is a bigger network than USA at the moment. Actually, have always kind of been a bigger network than USA. So you guys don't don't feel too down about that because like I said, the networks hold the power of this. One too. one thing I can mention too, so the raw rating, I think it was number one in the demo. Um I don't know a number off the top of my head, but it was actually like a 2.2 million watched because the night after Raw is like a huge fucking deal. Yeah. They're happy with the rating. Don't get mm-hmm. me... Never said everybody's going to watch Monday Night Raw. The rating was fantastic, but then you look at the other aspect of it about people trashing it repeatedly, mm-hmm. and then the network and the powers that be probably like, wait, a lot of people watched it, but it was garbage. We may not want this or continue to go in this direction so they're gonna say hey vince do this and that like you said we want roman on raw more often than twice a year is that gonna happen now i have no idea there's so many factors when this vince mcmahon thing and you have to juggle it's like you have to play you're walking on eggshells with this guy man he's gonna totally ruin everything that triple h tried to envision and build he is it's just no question about it and that peak that vision must have been short term. But I want to talk about something more positive, right? SmackDown was a pretty good show. The Sami Zayn, Jay Uso thing. Sami Zayn goes on SmackDown. He's like, hey, Jay, I need to talk to you. Something doesn't feel right. It's, it feels weird here. And Sami's like, hey, you don't have to go down with the ship. The bloodline's crumbling. Let's talk about something that was actually good this week. That's still a pretty good storyline, the Sami and jay uso thing because jay always teases like he's gonna get back with sammy remember solo sokol was beating the shit out of yeah, sammy yeah, jay and, he, and, back, right? and jay stopped him and it was like no 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 no, don't he's had enough and then guess what jay with the super kick and then beats him down himself he did that twice now it got a huge pop on monday night raw vince probably didn't book that because it got it was actually pretty good we know vince doesn't book good things anymore so Ooh. that actually got actually a pretty good pop and then this actually was actually really good so Things can be good. The story of the Bloodline Saga continues. The Bloodline Saga of them crumbling, it's... I almost don't believe it now because, yeah, they lost the tag titles and Sammy's just trying to put the doubt in Jay's head. But Jay's still... He's still kind of with Roman now. And you know Jay's only going to do as far as he wants. And then, you know, Jimmy's going to tag along with Jay. And now, what I don't get and I don't like... People are mentioning Solo Sokoa defeating Roman Reigns. Where the fuck did this come from? What is that? What does Solo have to do with anything? Solo, if anything, is a new right hand man, right hand man of uh, Roman. Tell me where where are people getting this shit from? Solo Sokoa? They throwing him the him in the mix to one to defeat Roman Reigns? Where the fuck did that come from? That doesn't make any sense. Can anybody explain that? I can see what they mean. He's been strongly booked as the heavy, but they're they're. They're overbooking it in their own heads, man. He's just the heavy for right now. Yeah, that, that, uh, that to um, me, that doesn't make any he's sense. He's not a leader. Yeah, he's he's not, not a leader. I or love a front Solo. Runner. I can see big things coming from him in the future, but right now he he's is the, brute. the heavy. He's not being pushed to beat Roman. If he ever does, I don't think I'm going to hate it. I'm going to be like, where the fuck does this come from? It'll be interesting, but no, not, not, not yet. Not it, yet, guys. You guys need to chill. I'll be honest <laughs> with you. I'm probably in the minority on this one, but after WrestleMania, I'm kind of ready to move on from the Bloodline and Sami Zayn. Yeah, they won the tag titles. I know they're continuing the story here. It seems kind of forced now. Now it seems like, all right, 
come on now. Let's let's get some re- resolution here. Like you're gonna keep going with this. Jay is very main event. Jay main event. He made event on SmackDown. Jay is almost the catalyst in all this. What does Jay do? Do he eventually turn on Roman and defeat him for the undisputed title, or does he cost Roman for the? Uh, that's where people want to know. Where the fuck are we gonna go with this? And I know we complain. We want instant gratification, but then at the same time, we want long term booking because sometimes we don't feel like stories play out enough. We can't have it one or the other. Like we want it to play out, but it reaches a certain point where like, all right. Let's kind of move on now. And I'm I'm just not getting tired of it necessarily, but I want to see it move, progress a little faster. That's all I'm just trying to say. That's what I'm trying to get at. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's just because uh, things get redundant and boring sometimes. And uh, it's not, you know, we're not going to be Bruno San Martino in this shit 10 year reign. You know, it's not Roman possible thousand now. days, thousand days is champ. Yeah, it's not possible anymore. We we gotta we gotta figure out kind of where we need to go. If he if he hits a thousand, and, he will hit a thousand, guarantee uh, it. Oh yeah, for sure. But when he does, you know, we see kind of the ending right there. I'm I'm fine with it. Yeah. This this was exhausting. Yeah. I'm tired of talking about how shit Raw was and how good SmackDown was. But we're gonna be here every single week. Talking about the exact same thing because you know Mm-mm. isn't going to leave for another two years. Unless he's fired because he actually has a boss now and he can get fired. That's the only way he's leaving. The only way because he's not going to voluntarily leave until he gets his way. And Triple H will not be in any creative capacity by the end of the year. Mark my fucking words. That's all. I'm Neil Pretty Boy Thomas. This is your favorite of all time, Dean Walker. And I'm your boy Cordell, <laughs> a.k.a. Smoke. That's the podcast. We're out, guys. Bye.